Hi, good morning, and welcome, and thank you for joining us at here at Live at Orchestra Hall via our new virtual community that we've created here at Lakeside Chautauqua. With the pandemic and COVID-19, things are not normal this year. And so there's a lot of changes that you'll be seeing at Lakeside, just as we're seeing around the globe and in the world. The state of Ohio has continually set a course of mandates to keep us safe and healthy, and Lakeside has been following our state, local, and county health guidelines as we work to reopen and create a season for you, and as we work with our partners around uh, different places. So thank you for joining us this morning. This normally would have been an orchestra hall and it would have been an opportunity for all of us to come together and have conversation and give you updates on what's happening at Lakeside. But unfortunately, that's not possible this year. So we're coming to you live from Orchestra Hall, which is also kind of our now virtual studio for the summer. So with that said, I'm here with our acting president, Mr. Dan Dudley. I'm also here with Alana Terry, who is our director of development. And we'll be answering questions that came into advan our advancement office by you for this um, for this uh, this morning's session. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Dudley and uh, and we'll begin our uh, our community update. I don't have a lot of introductory comments, um, but I just really wanted to say, you know, we all love Lakeside and we're all um, have this kind of heartfelt connection with this wonderful place. And, uh, you know, we, we are, Really looking forward to seeing everybody this summer like we normally do. We know some of you aren't going to be here, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys in 2021 and beyond. Um, so we're, we're, we're really just excited about now getting out of this uh, horrendous plan, <laughs> planning and replanning and this uh, pandemic-influenced uh, period of time and getting ourselves into uh, uh, at least a, a summer that we can uh, enjoy, even if it's a little different than what we're expecting. So again, um, you know, looking forward to welcoming everybody this summer that uh, that travels and decides to come and visit us uh, here at Lakeside. Let's get into the questions. Okay, the first question I have is for Dan. Uh, we've had general questions about COVID-19 and Lakeside preparations. Could you respond to how Lakeside is preparing? So, you know, all through this spring here, we've been working um, to get Lakeside open. And, uh, you know, it's been, uh, we're sitting right now where the state of Ohio is slowly reopening and they're providing good guidelines about, you know, what we should be doing and what preparations we need to make really throughout all of the different things that, uh, that we do. So um, when they allowed restaurants uh, and retail establishments to open, there were specific rules. Um, lots of our vendors are following those. We'll be following those in the hotel lakeside dining room. Um, you know, please help us by following those rules. We need we need everybody really to help us out on this year to make uh, the regulations that were put in place for us and that we're then communicating to you and every one of the venues that you help us by following those. Um, you know, when we got the recreation uh, venues, uh, the information about those opening, uh, which open next Tuesday, we have specific rules there, again, about what we're allowed to do, how frequently we have to clean uh, equipment, those type of things. So a lot of that's already been spelled out for us by the state of Ohio. Um, in general, you know, there's some general things. Uh, we're obviously going to be doing dealing a lot with social distancing. Um, you'll see when we do events at the Steel Memorial Bandstand, we've already moved the uh, benches far apart from each other. Um, we'll be asking people to sit in the grass and bring their own chairs and sit away to be as safe as they want. We're, we're really going to rely on you to you know, be in those situations if you're comfortable. And if you're not comfortable, then you know, you're know you going to have to move to another place or not attend that event. Um, it's really going to be where you know what you personally and what your personal situation is as far as how at risk you are. Um, but you know you, we're going to rely on a lot for the view to make those decisions. Um, we did make a decision about masks, you know, obviously at the federal level, at the state level, it, you know, there's not a requirement to wear masks everywhere you go. It's a difficult you know, one for us. Um, we're gonna recommend highly that you wear them, especially when we're in public, uh, at public events, places where maybe there's more people. Um, so we're gonna recommend that you wear them. We actually have these masks for our employees. We have those available to sell as well. 
Um, we probably will be having some of our paper ones available to give out here early in the season at some of the events as well. Um, but requiring them is difficult. Um, you know, one of the comments I gave to somebody was if it's a, if it was a homeowner who lives inside the gate and they refuse to wear their mask, uh, you know, we don't really have much, we can't kick them out of the only home they have and have them leave Lakeside. So, um, it's a difficult one for us, but we're going to be highly recommended you wear them in the public places. Um, we've got a bunch of questions, I think, about the cleaning guidelines. There, there were specific cleaning guidelines issued by, like, the uh, Hotel and Restaurant Association. You know, we're looking at those cleaning guidelines as far as what you need to do in a hotel room, uh, how you need to sanitize certain things. There's a lot more steps, right? There's a lot more sanitizing of doorknobs and high-touch places that you wouldn't have seen before, uh, we wouldn't have done before. So those guidelines are being given by uh, hotel associations, and um, we are utilizing those. And then we're really transferring those also over to our cottage rental cleaning business. You know, where 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 we rent cottages, we've upped the level of cleaning that'll happen between guests. Now we only deal with about a third of the rentals. So uh, some of you have asked about like, hey, can we understand what that cleaning uh, level is in uh, in the cottage I'm renting? Um, if you're running from uh, Lakeside Chautauqua Realty, we can tell you we, what process we've put in place to clean those between uh, uh, different guests. We obviously have Street Realty. They're going to have a different set, so you wouldn't need to go talk to them about what their uh, cleaning uh, uh, rules are and guidelines are. And then obviously, if you rent it directly from a homeowner, you're going to have to talk to that homeowner specifically about what their cleaning practices are. In the hotels, obviously, we control all that, and we are uh, making sure we're cleaning all of the, the public areas, the lobbies, those type of things. You'll find we have plexiglass in a number of places to keep guests and and uh, separated from uh, from employees. So we've got a lot of the things you're seeing everywhere in the world. Uh, when you go into establishments, you're seeing those at Lakeside as well. Um, so anyway, I, I think that's enough for that question. Thank you. There have been multiple questions about what is going to be open and closed, or what is open and closed. How do you determine that? So all along this spring, we've been following the, the really state and uh, governmental guidelines about what is allowed to be open and, and what we're allowed to do. So um, where we're sitting right now is we've got the sailing center that's, that's open. Um, we've got uh, most recreation that will be opening on Tuesday. and um, we're, you know, when we looked at Hoover Auditorium and when we decided to make the decision to close that for the entire season, you know, right now the state of Ohio is still on, uh, you know, indoor gatherings of 10 people. And we really looked at, you know, Hoover Auditorium. And even though we thought we could probably separate people and social distance them inside that big auditorium, you know, it's an indoor, it's an indoor venue and the state of Ohio isn't allowing that at this point in time. And we didn't expect them to do that. So, um, Hoover closed for the season. We're seeing the same thing. We're sitting in Orchestra Hall, which is where we normally show movies. Um, the movie uh, uh, industry has not been opened by the state of Ohio yet. Um, we'll, we'll react to that when we get to that point. So um, I know Mike's going to talk probably about some of the uh, uh, programming, but for instance, things like the Rhine Center, we're, we're going to close that that building so we don't have indoor events but we're going to have classes there some will be virtual and some will be outdoors so you'll see that we moved a lot of things outdoors and that's really what uh, uh you know one of the things we're doing to make sure everybody's safe in these in these venues but um we're actually f just following the state of ohio as they open things then we're allowed to open things and um, we'll just continue that through the summer um, the one thing I did want to mention, I know we had a specific question about public restrooms. We do have public restrooms open. We probably don't have all of them open, but uh, we do have, you know, we're trying to make sure we got at least uh, a set of public restrooms open in every part of town so that if you're walking around town, you're not too far from an open public restroom. I know a question that is on a lot of Lakesiders' minds. Um, what about the pool and the wellness center? Do you have a response to that? Uh, yes. Okay. So um, the state in the last round of, of openings did allow the opening of fitness centers and, uh, and swimming pools. So um, we're looking at those. There are pretty strict rules about how it works. So for instance, like in a fitness center, 
you've got to keep people six feet away from each other, which, which might be easy in a very large fitness center. But obviously, we have a small fitness center with just a number of pieces of equipment. So we need to do some looking at whether we can meet those regulations and get that one open. We, we think we, we potentially can. It's just we're not there yet. So that'll be something we look at in the future. The swimming pools are kind of a different animal. Uh, lots of different regulations about how we're supposed to try and do that. Um, um, that, that make it difficult. I mean, at the very least, the swimming pool potentially goes from 200, 300 people in that swimming pool area to, you know, 40. So um, we haven't done that full calculation yet, but it's going to be a significantly reduction in the number of people that could be in the pool. And we got to think about how that would possibly work. Um, and so we know that's not going to open anytime soon. We're probably looking at looking at it and figuring some things out over the next two to three weeks. And then we'll make a determination about the, you know, the swimming pool. Hopefully we'll make a determination about the fitness center maybe earlier than that. But right now those two are closed and we're still looking at how we might open those uh, sometime later in the summer. Thank you. Also, uh, someone has a specific question. Why are we not closed like Chautauqua in New York? Well, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, Chautauqua New York came out pretty early and said, we're, they didn't, they didn't really say they're closed, but what they said were they were canceling all of their in-person events. And, um, and they actually specifically mentioned they were closing their hotel as well. Um, but if you, if you actually step back, we're actually at the exact same situation where they are. They, they said they were closed and now they're slowly opening some things up. We basically have said all along, hey, we, we know we can't open everything, but we're going to open what we can, what, we're, what we can open safely. Um, so if you actually look at their website now, you will see that uh, we're actually very similar in what's open and closed. Uh, you know, their hotel was originally going to be closed the entire season. Now their, their website says they're considering when they might open it during the summer. Our hotel is closed and we're planning that they open sometime around uh, June 19th. Um, their big auditorium is closed for the season. Our big auditorium is closed for the season. Um, recreation, if you look at their website now on what they're saying about what's open, you know, they're saying the same thing we always said, which was they will open whatever can be open safely. Um, one of the factors that's in this whole thing is really, it's, it's, a, it's a thing difference between New York and Ohio. So New York, um, they obviously had a much uh, tougher time with this pandemic. They are kind of behind or later in the opening of their state. Ohio is ahead and earlier in the opening of the state. So where we're both sitting here really saying we'll open what we can and we'll open whatever we can do safely and whatever our state allows us to open, the fact that Ohio's you know two months ahead probably of where New York is is allowing us to be in a different situation. But uh, when you really look now about what their website says about, you know, they're still operating their gates. They're not charging a gate fee because they're a little more wealthy than we are, but they're still operating their gates, letting certain people in and out. They're still uh, letting homeowners in just like we are. They're still opening rec uh, venues if they can. Um, they may open their hotel. So um, really, we're, we're almost in the same situation. Great. Um, the next question is regarding the change in gate fees and charging uh, during conference weeks. Would you like to comment? Uh, I don't want to comment, but I'll, I will comment. Uh, so, you know, we knew this was going to be a different summer, right? Uh, it, it didn't take long. <laughs> Michael, we probably, it probably took one day of seeing this COVID-19 thing hit and all of a sudden, it was like, everything's going to change for us. We got we to change a, a whole bunch of stuff. It's not going to be the same summer. And when we looked at that, it's not going to be the same summer, then it was, we can't offer the same things and we can't charge the same things. So um, we spent some time, obviously, during the uh, springtime. And obviously it's not a decision that we make by ourselves. We make that with um, the finance committee of the Lakeside Association board. The entire board was involved in a lot of this discussion. But you know, we did significantly lower the fees, um, daily fees and season pass fees uh, to reflect this unusual season and what we're you know, able to have as far as programming. Um, with the conferences, you know, we, those weren't really what people think about them as free weeks. I mean, the, the conferences were here and they were paying for all the facilities and they were paying for all the facilities to be open. So 
The fact that mini golf was open and staffed and shuffleboard was open and staffed was because the conferences were here and they were paying for those things to be open for their guests and for their families. Um, so, so, you know, in fact, there really was a fee for operating Lakeside that, that period of time. We were just now we're finding that there were people that were coming during those weeks that weren't associated with the conferences and they were really coming to enjoy what they might've called a free week. So, you know, it, it's kind of a little difficult for us now that we're stepping back and looking at that. We obviously made the decision to operate the gates all the way from Memorial Day through the season. Um, that's kind of a safety thing. It lets us control who's in here. Um, you know, just last weekend we had uh, complaints about, you know, lots of fishermen on the dock and fishermen not social distancing and fishermen drinking beer on the dock. And it's much harder for us to deal with those things when the gate is not operating and anyone can come into Lakeside. Much more easier for us to control what's going on in Lakeside when we have the gates operating. So there's really two things there. The operation of the gates brings us some, some safety and comfort inside. And then charging the fees really is to pay for what's, uh, what's gonna be open during that period of time. Now, I think we got some questions because we had to put out there that there would be this fee for this period of time with little or no programming. And people said, why am I paying if there's nothing going on? Well, obviously we had to say there was little or no programming because at that time, the state of Ohio hadn't opened anything up. Well, now the state of Ohio has opened things up. So, you know, obviously during those weeks when, um, when we're charging that lower gate fee up through June 19th, that, um, you know, we're gonna have the recreation venues open and staffed. Uh, obviously the, the restaurants are open and the uh, uh, retail stores and things like that are open. So there are going to be things open. We just couldn't say it at the time because we, we weren't able to say something's open if the state of Ohio hadn't really opened them yet. So uh, there was another question where someone said, well, why are you surprising us with this you know, right now? So, you know, it, it, it's not real difficult to just step back and say, okay, well, COVID-19 surprised the world, right? In January, February and March. And, surprised all of us, everything changed, surprised the state of Ohio, right? And the state of Ohio changed all their rules about whether we could go outside and whether we could eat at restaurants. And, and then that affected the conferences. And so then the conferences made decisions about that and decided they couldn't hold events for thousands of people. And when they made that change, then we had to look at how we were gonna be operating during the summer. And that's where we made the changes about operating the gates and, uh, and fees. So. You know, I feel bad that, that people think like we surprised them with this, but when you look at the timing about how this whole thing has evolved since really January and February, um, you know, there's just, I mean, there are still things we, you know, swimming pool was a good example. We just got surprised that they opened that last week. And so now we're scrambling around trying to figure that out. So there'll be someone that's going to say we surprised you with keeping it closed or keeping it open or whatever. But I mean, we just got the ability to start thinking about that in the last week. So um, there's there's a lot of surprises in this whole uh, pandemic and uh, that that's just kind of one of them, so. Well, the next question um, was discussed and talked about a lot last summer, um, but how is COVID-19 affecting uh, the master plan and the infrastructure project moving forward? Okay, so um, yeah, we've been talking about the master plan projects and infrastructure a lot over the last, you know, two years or so, two or three years. Um, so, you know, the timeline on those projects and those of you that came to some of our gatherings in, in February in Florida and South Carolina um, or North Carolina, the, uh, you know, we were telling everybody, Hey, we're going to be almost done with these projects and we're going to communicate to you all all summer long about what the plans are and get your feedback. And all that's kind of on hold right now. So if you think about the timeline here now, you know, we weren't able to complete all the work though we were pretty close to completing most of the work. We weren't able to present that those projects as kind of almost final versions to the board. So we're not now able to present those to the community this summer. And, and, it, and it's not really fair to present them to the community this summer because you know, we don't think everybody's going to be here. We know there are people that are gonna stay in Florida and not come to Lakeside this summer. So, so we want everyone's opinion about those. So at this point in time, you know, a lot of that stuff's just gonna get pushed further into the future. I would anticipate, you know, if we get 2021 to be a normal summer, 
that you will see us presenting a lot about the master plan projects and the infrastructure project and how we're going to fund those and uh, those type of things. Well, those are all going to be now in the future. We're not, we're not able to do that this summer. So um, it also gets us a little bit of time. There were a couple of places where those projects, the, the, we were pushing so hard to get them completed that we've actually, you know, spent maybe a little more money than we, than the funding's coming in a little slower for that project, you know, uh, specifically. So it gives us a little time now to let the funding catch up with those projects, finish those probably over this winter and spring, present them to the board in a proper fashion, and then we can present them to the community in proper fashion in 2021. And then, um, um, we're, we'll deal with those projects that are just to push out a little further in the future. Thank you. Um, a major concern has been the high water. Can you comment on the high water and shoreline erosion, uh, specifically the western shoreline? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the water is at one of its highest levels, and there really isn't anything we can do about that right now. And, and, and because it's at a high level, we end up with uh, more erosion every time there's a major storm. So um, we actually have about seven areas that we've got engineers looking at, and they've made proposals on the work to look at those seven areas. We have um, one of them, the highest priority for us was Perry Park, where we're actually seeing large amounts of um, dirt erosion that was going to cause us problems right up to the most beautiful mile uh, uh, walking path. So um, so that was really our number one priority. You'll see that we're working on some of that here in the uh, in the um, springtime and, and early summer. Um, we need to do some inspections of the dock. So that's really our number two project. It may lead to some work at the project at the uh, dock. It may not. It may be that we do the inspection. They say we have 10 more years and we'll push that one a little further in the priority. The Western Shore is probably the third um the third priority there. It is an area that is much more protected than most of our other shoreline. It's got uh, uh, the marina to the west and our dock to the east. It does take some, uh, you know, brunt of storms that come directly from the north, which is, you know, happens on occasion. But most of our storms come from the east or west, and those are not, uh, they don't really impact that area of the uh, shoreline. So that's kind of why it was a little further down on the priority list. It's obviously all a large area too. So when we get to that one and we get the engineering done on that one, it's a much larger area to deal with. It's going to be much more costly than some of the other projects. Um, the other thing I would say too is the last time that shoreline was expanded out into the lake, the proper permits were not done at that time. That was, uh, I don't know how long, 10, 15 years ago, way before me. And, um, and so we're having some issues with, uh, you know, where we are in the uh, Ohio EPA uh, working through the permits because we're obviously not, we do not have permits for the shoreline where it is at. So there's some complications in how that project needs to come about. There, there was a specific question where someone asked, like, why don't we just get a agreement with a builder that they bring all their rubble down and concrete, uh, you know, rubble and dump it down in that area so we don't have any of the, the uh, erosion anymore. So just so you know, the, the, the rocks that we're allowed to put there, that's all EPA regulated. And even back to the quarry, like the quarries that can, can have their rocks on the shoreline have to be approved that the quarry rocks they have, say for instance, don't have heavy metals and things like that. So there are only certain quarry rocks that are allowed to go there you can't just take uh, construction rubble anymore. You can't take concrete, leftover concrete, and just dump it down on the shoreline. That's that's not allowed anymore. That's a you know an infraction from an EPA standpoint. So um, we're a little limit on kind of what we can do there. At least you know, when you compare the Perry Park shoreline to the Western shoreline, the shoreline on the western side is about at the lake level. So yes, we see some erosion, but it you know it's it's you know two feet of dirt. Perry Park, when you looked over there, you know, that land is so much higher than the, the uh, lake level. So every time you get a little bit of erosion, it's 20 feet of, of dirt that's falling, you know, into the lake. So you can kind of see why those got prioritized the way they were. So anyway, we're, we are working. Again, we have seven areas we're looking at along the lakefront. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be probably 10, 15 years to get all those seven areas uh, completed. There were also uh, multiple questions regarding specific financial information. 
where Lakeside revenue comes from, where Lakeside spends this money. Uh, can you share some of these details specifically about the foundation? So, um, so let's talk about the foundation question first. So, so um, the foundation is a separate 501c3. So it's a separate entity from a kind of nonprofit ta and taxing standpoint. So it actually has its own 990, which for those of you that are accounting nerds like me, that's the nonprofit tax return. So um, they have a separate file, uh, 990 that they file. Uh, the association files a separate one. But from an audited financial statement, the foundation is considered part of the Lakeside Association in those audited statements. So if you look on our website where we've got the audited financial statements, you will see in there specific information about uh, the endowment and the investments that are endowment. They're in some of the footnotes in the audited financial statements. Um, so we've got kind of the, the some audited information that's out there on our website. You can get to that again as the foundation can be seen as part of the association's uh, statements. We don't put the 990s, the tax returns, out on the uh, website mainly because they're they're pretty much public anyway. Um, there are lots of uh, lots of entities like GuideStar where you can go and you can get you can see Lakeside's 990s for the last couple of years. You can see the foundation's 990s, so you you can easily get to those other places. So we typically don't put them on our website. Um, in general, let's talk about you know transparency and kind of our financial information. Um, we're not going to do that here. Um, I, I could go, I could pull up spreadsheets. We could talk for hours and Michael and them won't get a chance to talk. Please, please don't. Yes. Okay. So, um, but what, what I will say about two years ago in the lakeside, two summers ago, we put together a huge, uh, I think it was five individual stories about the financial situation at lakeside, where our revenue comes from. Uh, all the different categories, where we spend money, all the different uh, categories of where we spend money. And it was really detailed. We you know, explained how it worked. Um, so I would, I think we have a summary of that available. Um, if someone wants that, I think we'll, we'll probably put that online. If it's not online, it may already be online. Um, but it's a nice little summary. And then what I've, uh, I've actually already talked to our the head of our finance committee, the chair of our finance committee and, uh, We'll do an update of that. I, I don't think it's going to make sense to do it this summer because this summer is going to be an oddity and we won't be done with it yet. Um, I think the interesting one be, will be to do that, you know, again next summer where we do a detailed uh, look at where our revenues come from and where our expenses are. And we can actually compare then what the pandemic year looked like compared to a regular year. So, um, you know, I again, we, we all of our financial statements, I want to say the six or seven years are available on the uh, website. You can get to those. There actually is some detail in there that breaks out some schedules that break out expenses in the different categories. So you can kind of see in there what uh, Lakeside spends its money on. I would say, you know, look at those uh, articles from the uh, Lakeside or the last two summers ago. And uh, we'll put that summary of that, those five articles that were summarized in into one four page document. We'll put that on the website too, so people can see that. So um, we'll keep showing you as much as uh, you know, we can and uh, try and be transparent every time we turn around with the, uh, with the financials. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate uh, your responses to those questions. Um, now, Michael, um, I have some questions or the Lakeside community has some questions for you. Sure, go ahead. Um, will the app <clears throat> Mambo be used this summer and will there be a Lakesider newspaper? Sure. So the uh, Mambo app will be used and will be available starting Memorial Day weekend. So uh, people can start downloading it now and putting it back on their phones. Um, and what's interesting about the app is that, you know, it, it was an on-site tool. We're at Lakeside. I got the app. I'm going to plan out and do my whole schedule of events. Here's the schedule of the kids' events. And, and it becomes your, your own personal calendar as you walk around and, uh, Lakeside. This year, it's it's a hybrid, so it also gives you access, and you can see what's going to be offered through our virtual community, as well as what's happening on site. Now, obviously, our season is greatly reduced, so uh, it's taken us a little while to get the app switched over from just a calendar mechanism to an opportunity for a calendar that has our virtual and on-site options that are happening. Um, the Lakesider, we will have a Lakesider this summer. It won't be as robust as what people are used to, but we will have a Lakesider because especially as Dan was talking about state mandates and how they change, as, as we change through the summer, 
as restrictions relift or as maybe restrictions get put back on, <clears throat> as we watch how things you know play out with COVID-19, we need we'll constantly be communicating to the community about what what's the schedule of events this week and what what it is virtual. So you know, I need to go on to the website and click to to experience uh, an interview or a program you know through live stream or through Zoom, or you know, I can go down to the Steel Memorial Bandstand and we can go to Vespers tonight and tomorrow we can go to the family, you know, the Wednesday family night program that's going to be down there. So it won't be as robust because the season is not as robust, but we will have a uh, smaller condensed version of the Lakesider for the community. Thank you. Will any of the original programs that were scheduled um, to happen, will they happen now at the Pavilion or the Steel, Steel Memorial Bandstand? So I guess that question could be thought of in two different ways. Is it the Hoover programming that will move down to the pavilion or the bandstand, or is it the programming that was traditionally at the pavilion or bandstand? So maybe I'll answer that both ways. So when it comes to the Hoover acts, no. Those acts, um, when we closed Hoover, and there was a process uh, of closing Hoover that we had to work with every single artist. and. Uh, as we closed Hoover, those acts have either been canceled or that we've postponed them to future seasons. So they may not be here next year, but maybe two years out. So there's a lot of logistics that w that we've been working through with the agents, the managers, and the artists in that process. But those acts are too big to actually produce or present at the bandstand. So the, the lighting, the sound, and all the production needs that go into their performances, we just can't duplicate outside or you know with the facilities we have outside here at Lakeside. But some acts that were at Hoover that can be at the bandstand, like the Drowsy Lads, were going to be at Hoover. They are going to be performing at the bandstand this summer. So there's a couple of acts that we are able to maintain and keep for their performance. But most of the, most of those acts have been canceled or postponed. What we've done with the bandstand is to provide entertainment throughout the evening. Um, as Dan said, we've socially distanced and, and spread out the benches so they're marked and indicated as such, and we encourage people. You know, use your own judgment and, and, and how you feel about coming down and, and being a part of the entertainment experience. Um, bring your chairs and, and blankets and spread out on the lawn and keep socially distanced so you can enjoy these performances. But the, um, the, we're, we're, what, what this COVID-19 has done is actually made us rethink locally and regionally. We have so many great artists that are in the state of Ohio. I mean, I, Ohio is one of the highest populations of artists and musicians in it. So. We're, we're working with Ohio artists to perform down at the bandstand. So Helen Welsh will be here. Like I said, the Drowsy Lads, uh, Laura Kamaroff will be coming. So there's a bunch of different acts that we're excited to bring. And, and not just musical groups, but also magicians and stuff that are local or regional that from the state of Ohio that will be coming to join us to entertain. Now, when it comes to things that were programs like Vespers, Dockside Service that were traditionally held at the pavilion, those are moved to the bandstand as well this summer. Um, because we want to make sure that we have the space for our, our, you know, so we're not congregating, you know, in close proximity like we do with Dockside. You know, all the, you know, we cram in there and there's about two, you know, a little over 200 people that are all participating in that service. Same thing with Vespers, you know, on the, on the West Deck. We want to make sure that everyone can experience that and be safe and socially distanced. And so those programs and those services have been moved over to the bandstand. Um, some things... The programs that were already scheduled at the bandstand for the summer remain. So the Sunday night series, some of the other programs that we had scheduled to perform there, those are those may, you know remain on the schedule. So great, thank you. What about movies? Will there be any movies this summer? Well, part of that is what the mandates from the state of Ohio say about movie theaters. So uh, we are constantly. I mean, two o'clock has become a sacred time at Lakeside watching. Um, we, you know, we're all in our, in our, either in our offices or when we were all working from home, you would have up on the side of the screen, you know, Governor DeWine's uh, press conference daily at two o'clock where we were learning with the rest of the state about what was going to be open and what was not. So our, eye, our eyes and ears are open for what they're going to say about movie theaters. And if we're allowed to open movie theaters and start showing, following different protocols that the state has laid out, then we will begin showing movies at Orchestra Hall practicing whatever those guidelines are as long as we can as long as we can match what the requirements are to open this building safely orchestra hall to show movies we will that also will go along with um, uh, our educational lectures that are in the in orchestra hall 
or Faith for Living Orchestra Hall, depending on what the requirements are for gathering and stuff, we will try to invite people to come in as those restrictions and mandates lifted. One of the things we are looking at doing this summer, and we'll announce later in a couple weeks before the season begins, is doing outside movies. And we've, we've played around with the ideas, you know, drive-in movie theaters are very popular right now. And, and there's a kind of a, a resurgence in the interest of drive-in theaters right now. Um, so what if we did the golf cart drive-in movie theater? Or an opportunity for you to bring your blankets out and, and to a green space and we put up a screen and we do an outdoor movie. So everyone's outside still maintain social distance and uh, safety protocols. Um, but having that experience of just enjoying a, a family movie night, you know, here at Lakeside. So so somewhere in the summer, yes, we will be doing movies. Will they be at Orchestra Hall? That depends on what, you know, the mandates say. But we, we are looking at doing some kind of cool things outside this summer. I love that idea. I know Dan touched on this a little bit, but why is live entertainment canceled at Hoover when the space is large enough uh, to social distance. Again, Hoover, even though sometimes it feels like it's outdoor, we open the windows and you get a breeze through there, so it kind of feels like an amphitheater. Um, it still is an indoor venue, and right now the gatherings for those indoor venues still remain uh, at 10. Um, but also there's a lot of things too. We can't guarantee that, um, I mean, we did, we even walked through Hoover um, several times thinking, how would we social distance and how would we, you know, put the audience here, here, and here so that everyone is is in a, you know practicing those protocols that that the CDC and, and the state and federal governments have put out for us to keep us safe, but when you come to it, like when you think of other things like bathrooms and you think about congregating as people are coming in and out and stuff, there there's a lot of factors that had to, to weigh into that. So that was part of the reason about closing Hoover. The other part is so many artists are choosing not to travel or not to perform this summer. Um, some of them can't travel to perform uh, with a lot of the travel restrictions. So um, you know, when you look at when you looked at our original schedule of all the lineups, we, we had different groups like America and we had Winona and all these great things that we had planned. Is a lot of a lot of those groups, uh, you know, the concert venues that they're performing at the summer, everything's shutting down. And so we followed suit with that as well. As Dan said, you know, New York they've shut down their entertainment as well. Um, and that's across that's happening across uh, the nation and well across the globe right now. Um, and some of the some of the things that we, we look at is can we socially distance them effectively backstage? Can we you know are they able to travel but where they don't want to stay in hotels or how do we? So there's a lot of logistics that we work through with agencies, artists, managers, you know our team here at Lakeside, and um, and we we like so many others had to make the decision that this summer it just is not practical to open. And you see that across theater and concert venues across the nation right now. I think uh, even Playhouse Square in Cleveland said they're not even gonna open now until January of 2021. And that's just to, to make sure that we're maintaining safety for the artists and performers, the audiences, and keeping everyone safe. So I know that Hoover is, is you know, it, to me it's like the community center in a lot of ways. Um, so it's hard, it was really hard to come to that decision, but, but when we made that decision, we, we shared it with the community and uh, we made that decision once every artist had been talked with and, and communicated with and, um, and so, you know, it, like, like we said, it's not a normal year. So we think that some of the activities and the, and the artists that are going to be coming and performing for us this summer, I think will be wonderful entertainment and family fun and engaging. And um, it'll, be a, it'll be a slower summer. It'll be you're kind of going back in, in time a little bit and just having one of those good old summer times rolling along and just, you know, th there was a, there used to be a, a thing that was pretty popular called the art of doing nothing because that's when all the creative ideas and imagination and you know things came. So I think this is gonna be the summer of imagination and, and coming up with creative ideas and things to share with family and friends and, and you know keep physical distance, but maintain that social closeness that is so important to Lakeside. Thank you. Um, several people have asked about the virtual programming mm -hmm. um, and what platforms will be used. Can we talk, talk about that? Sure, so the virtual programming, um, Actually, when we first um, were seen, and this was, um, we had just returned from Florida and, then, and, and had these great experiences sharing all the great new things that were going to be happening here at Lakeside this summer. Because I was going to say, which one do you want to know? Like the first right. one we tried, the second, the third, the fourth, <laughs> fifth, or sixth. And we may be back now to like the second one. So just that's my comment on that. So when we realized that COVID-19 was, was creeping up on us and that this was going to ha maybe have some impacts on our summer season, not knowing how much early on, 
one of the first things we talked about is, okay, what can we do virtually? Um, because we started receiving comments in March that from people saying, I don't think we're gonna travel up at Lakeside this summer, and you know, we just wanna stay you know, where we are um, you know, in, in, you know, when they're not here at Lakeside. Um, and we understood that, but so many people, Lakeside, it, it's part of their family, it's a part of their home, it's a part of who they are. So how do we bring Lakeside to them if they're not here at Lakeside? And if we're not able to do social gatherings and things, the Chautauqua movement's all about faith. It's all about education. It's about rejuvenation and, and, and feeding our souls. So how do we bring that to people? And so we have created a virtual community that, you know, this is actually the first part of that virtual community is, is coming to you, um, you know, through this, this broadcast. But, and then our Hoover services, community worship services, those will be live streamed. And they'll be here from Orchestra Hall. So the Hoover Worship, which has all the preachers of the week, um, the different liturgists and music, and some of our mus you know, musical guests will, will be here. And they'll, we'll be doing those virtual so that people at home can still be, or either at home at Lakeside or wherever they live, when they're not at Lakeside, they, they can participate and be a part of that faith community that, that is so important to us. And all the faith for living on, in the mornings at 9 o'clock, the Chautauqua Lecture Series at 1030, they're all live streamed or they're all gonna be available on Zoom. And so people will go to the website and they'll click on those options. They're free and they're available to everyone. Uh, some of our wellness seminars and some speakers who will be talking about wellness will be coming virtual. And one of the things, as I was talking about the artists earlier, one of the things, so many presenters are not gonna be traveling this summer. So for us, the virtual community is that we may all join in on Zoom or in a live stream feed and so they may be in their home in Wisconsin or Delaware or wherever they were gonna be coming from to come instead of coming here, but they'll be doing their presentation and it gives us the opportunity for Lakesiders to watch their presentation, engage with some questions and Q and A, um, like you're moderating here, Dakota will be moderating the education lectures, Stacy will be doing wellness, um, and of course the Faith for Living um, programs, you know, all those preachers are planning to be here. So, so there's an opportunity for that virtual community to keep us connected and in, in, in what's so important to Chautauqua and so important to Lakeside. And as mandates allow some gatherings, like let's, let's say for instance, and I'm not saying this is happening, it's just a, as an example of they say, you can have gatherings up to 25 in a room. Then we can socially distance people in Orchestra Hall and 20, at least 25 people can come in and experience that presentation live, as well as people who can still join in and, and watch from home or from their cottage and, and stuff and be a part of that. So. Um, we're, it, it's a different mindset for our team to think virtually because one of the things that we're always about is come to Lakeside, put down your phone, drop your computer, and just live the life here and enjoy the experience. But unfortunately, that's, this is not a normal year, and it's actually the technology that's keeping the Chautauqua connection. You know? So it's kind of a, a weird thing for all of us to go through that mind shift and, and change what we're doing. But the team has been wonderful as they're behind the cameras now, and and making this virtual experience happen for our community. Next question is about some recreational programming. Um, will there be tennis, pickleball, shuffleboard, and other recreational programming, um, specifically tournaments, will those be held? Sure, so like Dan said, a lot of our recreation venues are opening May 26. And as they open, and I'll say May 26 or soon after because weather plays into us getting everything prepped uh, one of the reasons why Jim is Schweitzer is not with us today is because he's running around getting things prepped and ready um, for these different parts of Lakeside to open. Um, so as you go to these different rec venues, we just ask that you're respectful, you understand what the new protocols and, and things are. But when it comes to playing, like I think the question was pickleball or, or, or uh, tennis, um, we've actually modified the, the schedule of the tournaments and things. Nothing's being offered in June. A lot of things have been either canceled or postponed. Um, and so those, those dates are available. But, but it's really important for tournaments and stuff like that is that these, these programs are not going to be offered the way that they normally have been offered. People can't congregate. They're not going to be watching the games. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to be watching the matches all around the fences like maybe they normally would do. Is, is there's a whole new structure in how those are going to be operating. So you have to reserve courts now to come and play. When you're done with, you know, your game, then you leave the court area. You're not you're not hanging around and congregating in different places. You know, shuffleboard. You know, you wouldn't be congregating on the patio afterwards. And so it's really important that people follow that social distancing guidelines that are in place. 
and and how and how those work. So like clinics, you know, uh, we have some local instructors that are coming in to offer some lessons and things. But you reserve that ahead of time, and you make those arrangements ahead of time to participate in that clinic or the tournaments. As as the tennis and pickleball st staff are working through, is that you reserve the courts, and then that group comes and plays, and then whoever wins that match, then it gets teamed up with the other group, and then that gets reserved and played. So it will look different. It will feel different this year. and But we we want people to enjoy coming to Lakeside and being on the courts and playing shuffleboard or, or tennis or pickleball or mini golf or whatever it is. But we really want people to know that there's some different restrictions that they, they must follow this year. And, um, and it's important that they do because if, if they don't, some of these restrictions could shut us down. So we really want to make sure that people are respectful of that and, and know that we know it's not a normal year, and uh, we're trying to do everything to make sure that we can keep at least some semblance of fun and excitement and, and that, that social closeness that keeps us together, but maintain that physical distance. And, um, and, so, and, and with some of the activities and stuff that were originally planned, some of them have also moved over to virtual. So, so it'll be a different year, but hopefully 2021 will be back. Thank you. Are there still going to be youth and teen programming this summer? Sure. So things are a little different when it comes to youth and teen programming. The underground, which is the teen center, is closed for the summer. Um, but there is teen programming. And so I know a lot of the teens uh, love Chase McCart uh, McCarty. So Chase is coming back as our teen uh, program coordinator again. And, and so they're, they're, all their events that they're doing will start, you know, when the season starts in June, um, later half of June. And they're doing a lot of programming that's outside, keeping things outside. We know we've you know, as Dan says, we follow all these mandates and restrictions, but I've read more about science with Jim and Dan and the staff in the last two months than I've ever spent in any of my biology classes or anything in school. So, because we also want to know how does the, what, what, what is, you know, as the virus can, as we learn more about it, what we want to learn about too, so that we're making decisions that are, are well thought through and stuff. So keeping programs outside and keeping things to like, when it comes to kids and teens, you we won't see like contact sports, the volleyball, basketball right now. Those aren't open, so you're not going to see us doing like a team match of volleyball this year, like we did in previous years. So the programs are different. A lot of scavenger hunt type of things, a lot of things that keep them together but socially distanced. And so those programs will be on on the calendar, online, so people can check out what's there for teens, for kids, and youth programming. Um, you know, the Ryan Center, as Dan said, is closed, but there are certain things where, where kids can go and families can go pick up their art kits, and then they will get on Zoom, and at 11 o'clock or whatever time it may be, they're going to do that art project as a family art project with the kids, or the kids can do it by themselves, and they'll do it with the instructor via Zoom. So they can ask questions if they need to, like, oh, my, my project isn't working, what, what, how do I fold this or whatever, and they can answer that. So it's, it's, again, it's not ideal, but this isn't the ideal world we're living in right now either. So we're trying to maintain as many of those kids' classes and family things that we can. And so one of the, like our, our bookstore is doing uh, a walkthrough. So uh, in Cherry Park, you walk through the story and they have the signs up through the park. So you and your family with the kids can walk through and, and, and read the story, but you're going through the woods kind of and in, 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 in experiencing that. And there's different things that we're doing. We're going to Later in the summer, we'll have a funny walk zones in different places. So when the kids get to that, that's where they have to make their parents and then they have to walk funny as they go through that zone and stuff. So unique things that are that are different that that maybe we haven't thought about before because you know we have our all our different you know our traditional programming. But this year's non-traditional, so we're coming up with some non-traditional ideas to keep kids and families engaged. One comment that's probably worth adding right there. So one of the things we've had to do across really all the programming is to look at where we have outdoor venues that potentially we haven't used much in the past. So you heard Michael mention Cherry Park, like we're, we'll be doing some events in Cherry Park as far as like MGM and the uh, teens. Um, we'll be using uh, the area around the schoolhouse probably for some things. Mm -hmm. um, definitely we know that the farmer's market has to move to a much more wide open space. So I think it's going to be up by the schoolhouse as opposed to being downtown. Um, so, so you know, it's it's very interesting. We obviously have lots of outdoor spaces that are going to be great to do some of these things at. The obviously the big negative is they were much more weather dependent. So, as much as we've got these great spaces outdoors, and we're going to be utilizing all of them this summer, you get rain and then everything's pretty much canceled because you can't move them to an indoor rain location this year. So, um, you know, it, we actually have great outdoor spaces. It's just we'll have to deal with weather. 
But the but the favorite programs like like Dan's at MGM, it's at Cherry Park this year. Uh, God Squad will be outside Bradley Temple, and so we'll be using more of the space outside. Um, so those programs aren't going away; they're just more socially, physically designed outside this year. Thank you. I know we talked about what's going to be open and closed, and I know that you said you know the dock is open, weather dependent, of course, um, or water dependent. Uh, will the dock be open for fishing? Yeah, absolutely. So, and actually, one of the best tools for social distancing is a, a fishing pole is about roughly six feet. So, you know, a fishing rod. A fishing rod. Sorry. So, <laughs> so we we call them fishing poles. I don't know why. So, fishing rods. But, anyways, I mean that's that's a good calculator right there to say, okay, I'm going to stand this you know this far apart from you. But yeah, the dock is there, and we want people to go out there. Of course, always use your judgment and 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 what you're comfortable doing. But, you know, so social distance is, is important. So we want people to go out there, enjoy the sunsets, go out and fish, go out and experience just the, the, the beauty of the water. But be mindful about, you know, don't block paths. I mean, it's important that we keep pathway free. I know a lot of times people like to sunbathe or sit out there or whatever, but, but we just have to be a little bit more conscientious of, of, of how we're socially hanging out. So, um, but no, the dock is, is open for fishing and, and for people to walk in when the water's not over it like it was this week, so. Great, thank you. Um, final question, thank you both so much uh, for your time. Um, we've had lots of positive uh, responses to the communication um, and the season ahead that, that you're all planning. Um, can you tell us how you're feeling and how you're dealing with everything and the changes that are happening? I'll go first. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Here's how I, you know, and what's what's weird about this this last two months since middle of March, when we were all basically sent to work from home, is that this team is a team that is social. We congregate in rooms, we sit around tables, we're talking about programming, we're coming up with ideas, we're brainstorming. I mean, sometimes it's hard to get the once once the team's going and excited and we're planning and stuff. Hard to get it, get it down to you know to latch onto the one night one program that we're going to do that night, you know because we have twelve programs we want to do on a Tuesday night for the summer or whatever it might be. So, the one thing that was hard is watching us all be split up and have to work on Zoom and Teams, and all of a sudden you're looking at the Brady Bunch all day long on your screen instead of being in a room and meeting. So that was different for us because we're very social staff, we're a very social team, and this team. Um, you know, working with, with all of them has just been incredible because basically what happened is in March, we, we, yeah, we, we literally left the Florida visits, the North Carolina visit, and then came back to, okay, our world, everything we were, we've just shared in our excitement, all the new programs that we're going to introduce this summer and new opportunities we're going to introduce, this great lineup of, of entertainment and everything. It's, it stopped. And all of a sudden, it's like we, we had the staff stand on a rug, pulled the rug out from under them, and as they fell down, we said, hey, by the way, we're going to give you a whole new thing to think about, but you can't do it here. you got to go home and do it via computer. And so that was very different, but everyone came together so quickly and realized, okay, we have to redesign an entire season and an opportunity because all the staff is so passionate about programming and what we do at Lakeside to bring this to our community. So how do we keep the community engaged? And that's where we really latched on to how, do we, how are we gonna maintain physical distancing this summer and keep our social closeness and the connection that is so important to our community? And so, while it's not the summer we had hoped for by any means, um, I'm just really proud of, of the team because every day has been a challenge. Every day we get a new mandate or there's a change or a shift in, in and so, all our plans are constantly going here, going here, and going there. And so this team has just really rallied and has just really stepped up for this community. And 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 not just the staff, but also our board members who have gotten involved in so many conversations and discussions and helping us make these really tough choices. Um, and so many lakesiders who have just come out of the woodwork and said, hey, what do you need us to help with? I mean, even the last couple of days, you've seen a lot of them volunteer to help out with the grounds and getting the grounds ready. Um, it's just been incredible. So. Um, well, it's not the ideal season that we all had hoped for. Um, you know, we said hope has a, is courage with a plan, and, and this team has been courageous in moving forward to figure out 
what we could do for this summer. So I'm I'm looking forward to working with the teams and the staff to provide the best season we can with the world that we're in right now. I was going to say we we came out of last summer, I think, with the the morale of the team being about as high as it's really ever been as we came into our planning uh, through the fall and really thought we had nailed a really great season and the calendar events went out and, and, and we were running ahead of uh, uh, hotel reservations and cottage rental reservation. Everything looked like this was going to be just the great season and the, all the effort and work we'd put into planning it last fall was going to come to fruition with this great uh, uh, season. And typically you know, we start hiring people in uh, January, February. We roll ourselves in, and when we get to the season, we're kind of, we're kind of, uh, you know, we're ready for the season to happen because, uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's almost like we go from this planning, kind of relaxed planning phase because we've been doing it since fall, and all of a sudden we get to the season and we're ready to get all amped up. And this year's kind of backwards, which we've been amped up all spring planning and replanning. And, and so we're, we're almost, you know, I know you're going to, you know, we're not going to make everyone happy. And there's, there's lots of programming that the things that people typically have done in the past at Lakeside, there aren't going to be happening this year, but it's probably going to be a more relaxing season for, for the employees, as well as for the people that are coming to visit uh, Lakeside. I think, you know, you've had people that have mentioned, this is going to be like going back you know, to the lakeside 50 years ago or 100 years ago and how we're going to be much more outside and we're going to be, uh, you know, doing things that are much more uh, around community probably right. than not. The other thing I want to mention is, uh, you know, there's there's lots of times when we get feedback from the community uh, and we're just like, oh, great, you know, we got, <laughs> got somebody upset about something and we need to fix something or whatever. But if you've seen all our communications, we've been asking lots of times about, hey, hey tell us your ideas and tell yeah. us your thoughts. And that's yeah. actually been really helpful where we've been able to come through and look at something and say, okay, hey, don't do that. People are saying they're not interested in that, but they really are interested in these things. And we're trying to, you know, tailor it. So, so again, everybody's help from that standpoint as far as feedback has been really great. Um, we're getting lots of people saying, hey, I can help out with volunteering where do you need help? And there's lots of different areas where we can use that help. So um, I think it's, it is kind of a more of a community oriented summer. And yeah, it's going to be great to uh, so. see everybody uh, uh, kind of gather around for that purpose. So. Gather around, but six feet apart. Yes. Gather, <laughs> gather around, but stay apart from each other. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. Um, I hope that we answered all of them. If you have any additional information that you need, uh, please feel welcome to give us a call. Thank you.